Heads up Hobby Maniacs, I'm MBG Rob Bear, and today we're going to talk a little bit more about my workspace and kind of show off some of my commissions that I've done over the past month. Here's some of my first commission pieces, a pair of Imperial Guard, or I guess Astra Militarum Wyverns, and some converted Vulture gunships for Imperial Guard. Let's kind of get in here and take a closer look so you can see some of the weathering. As we get in tight here, you can see some of the chevron detail I did, as well as some of the weathering on the sides and across the front and on the yellow itself. From the side, you can see a lot more of the weathering around the tracks and up top on the barrels and some of the blue from the brass and metal weathering as well. This is one of my converted vultures I did for a commission. You can probably tell it's made from spare Vendetta parts. I actually did a tutorial up on Spiky Bits blog on how to make one of these. I accidentally had to make two because I forgot how to make the first one. <laughs> so if you take a look at these here, you'll notice they're just a little bit different apart as far as like the nose goes. But, and nose goes, everything else is uh, pretty much the same. For painting, I just used a bunch of different grays and some browns and dark browns for the scorching and uh, atmospheric effects there. Uh, come to think of it, I actually did a tutorial as well for how to get the cockpit pan uh, canopies to be that way, uh, that blue and white as well up on the blog. So make sure you hit up the airbrush uh, tutorial link at the top uh, so you can check that out as well. As far as work area goes, back to the workbench here. You can definitely see I got a little bit going on. Got a couple Night Titans here that I'm getting ready to start. There's a Acheron as well as a Lancer. Uh, they're already trimmed down. Of course, I didn't show you any of that because you know it's kind of boring to watch. You know, <laughs> trimming resin models, but uh, I just got to get them assembled up and uh, start painting them. And uh, next to that is my trusty toolbox. Maybe one day we'll do a, a video unboxing of what's in my toolbox because there's a ton of different. I guess uh, useful tools and things you might not normally expect to be in a toolbox and maybe I could go over that and show you some practical uses perhaps might be kind of fun little exercise and then I got my my trusty uh, exacto uh, uh, knife knife pad there cutting mat so I don't tear into uh, the already tore up <laughs> desk that it served me well for so long so speaking of airbrushing let's go out to the airbrush area area or as I like to call it the studio and show you that. Okay, so as promised, here is the big airbrushing studio. Uh, as you've probably already figured out, it's actually my kitchen. Uh, matter of fact, it's definitely a kitchen. <laughs> I just like to airbrush standing up. Speaking of which, just like the nice ladies at Walmart, I have a little cushy pad there, so when I'm standing up airbrushing, I don't wreck my... Uh, my old legs and knee, knee joints and things like that but it's really nice because I can just run the water and actually you know work on rinsing out the airbrush and things into the sink itself now of course there's a ton of plastic down just so I don't you know have to pay a lot of money when I move out for deposits but uh, that being the case that being said it, you know it's nice and easy to just do everything right here in the kitchen now I imagine a lot of you out there could never airbrush in your kitchen because you would get in a lot of trouble for it whether it's from your parents or your significant others however I mostly just answered my cats and my roommate and my roommate is pretty easy going uh, in the sink here you might notice there's a, one of these sonic care cleaners or not sonic care it's like sonic stripper or whatever for jewelry sometimes when I want to strip models I just put it in that thing and crank it up a couple times and it actually strips it down pretty good I put a little mix of water and also I think it's like uh, purple power or simple green or something like that one of those one of those uh, solvents just make sure you don't want to stick your hand in there uh, if it's high concentration because you might you might get some uh, burns and stuff on your skin I'm not sure I usually just use tongs to grab stuff out of there but it's a really good useful instrument uh, also for airbrushing if you get a bunch of stuff on your airbrush on clogs and things like that there's certain ways to do it. I just put in um, a couple of parts 
but I think you can also put in the whole airbrush. You might want to do a Google search before you do something like that because you don't want to mess your airbrush up. Sometimes you have to strip them and take things apart. So that's this side of the studio. And right here you can see it actually really is the kitchen. That is indeed where I cook. And over here, right across from the kitchen, is where I store all my paints. If you're like me, you might have way too many paints and paints that you've never even used before. I think there's definitely paints in here that I've never used before and I could probably go through and, uh, <laughs> and uh, kind of thin them out a bit, I imagine. But unfortunately, uh, I kind of know where everything is, so I'm just going to leave it where it is for now. And I got a little spot right there where I put miniatures that, uh, that are waiting to dry and things like that. Or I can just uh, plop them on the table right here on protective uh, you know tissues and things like that and then over here I got the booze library because you know you gotta stay motivated when you're when you're painting and things like that a couple couple uh, couple bottles over there to make things go a little bit easier I guess and some easy reading books for the studio that's pretty much it on the studio side guys I hope you enjoyed another little revealing look inside uh, the Spiky Bits World Headquarters slash studio. <laughs> Unfortunately, there was no cats in this video. Uh, maybe next time. They're so shy when the camera's on. Who knew? Who knew? So like I said, that's about it for this one, guys. Make sure you stay in the trenches. Subscribe to this YouTube channel. Check out the blog, spikybitsblog.com. And listen to our podcast, forgenarrative.com. No, I don't think anybody's really ever going to know that I don't have pants on.